This is the first section of the exponentials and logarithms uh, section, and this is about exponential functions. Exponential functions are basically functions of this type, y equals a to the power x. So x is now the power, okay? So this can be called the power, the index, the exponent, okay? So, and we're going to be, at, first of all, looking at graphs where x is the power. Now, a can be any value. It could be a positive number. It could be negative. Um, it could be a whole number. It could be a decimal. Yeah. But what we're doing is we're doing that number to a power and that power changes as x changes. Right, so first thing we're going to do here in this question is to plot some graphs. And we're plotting the graphs of y equals 3 to the x, y equals 2 to the x, y equals 1.5 to the x. Now you could do these on a spreadsheet or a graphic calculator, or you can do some table of values. What you're going to find is the graphs are like this. So let's start with y equals 3 to the x, y equals 3 to the power x. Um, then let's do 2 to the power x. Now what you'll find when you do 2 to the power x, it actually crosses at the same place. It will be slightly higher on this side, cross at the same place, but then be slightly lower over here. That'd be y equals 2 to the x. Now these are only sketches. y equals 1.5 to the x, that'd be a bit higher over here, a little bit flatter, a bit lower over here, and then y equals 1.5 to the power x. What they all have in common is that they all cross the y-axis at one, cross the y-axis at one. Now, why is that? Well, you're basically doing something, y equals something to the power zero. That's when x is zero. And we know that anything to the power zero is one. That's why it's one. Yeah, anything to the power zero equals one. That's why all of these graphs cross at one. And part B it says on a different set of axes, which we'll draw over here. It says, can we draw the graphs of y equals a half x? and y equals uh, 2 to the power x. Now when we do the y equals half x, um, what we're going to do is we're going to write half as 2 to the power negative 1. That's a half to the power x. And then that becomes 2 to the power negative x. Now, when we do 2 to the power of negative x, we're going to have a graph that looks like this. When we do y to the power 2x, we're going to have a graph like this. They are mirror images of each other. So this is y equals 2 to the power of negative x, which is the same as a half to the power x. And the graph that's the mirror image of that, is y equals 2 to the power x. So it's like a reflection in the y-axis. And in general, um, if you're drawing a graph of y equals a to the x, and you reflect in the y-axis, you'll get the graph of y equals a to the negative x. So we need to sketch this graph here and then write down the coordinates of the points where it crosses the y 
axis. So maybe the first thing would be to write half as 2 to the power negative 1. And then if you times the powers together, you get y equals 2 to the power negative x plus 3, like that. So if we think of y or f of x as being the graph of 2 to the power x, then f of negative x plus 3 is going to be the graph of 2 to the negative x plus 3. So we just need to work out what this does. So the negative x in there is going to reflect the original graph in the y-axis, reflect in y-axis. And then the plus here is going to, plus 3 there is going to move it that way by 3. So that will help us with the sketch. So I'll take the graph of 2 to the power x, uh, flip it in the y-axis, and then move it across by 3. I'm going to have something like this. Okay. As I said, it's only a, a sketch. It's the shape which is important. But what we're really interested in is where it crosses the y-axis here. And to find out where it crosses the y-axis, we make x equal to 0. So at this point here, uh, x equals 0, so we just plug that in, y equals a half 0 minus 3, which is basically y equals a half to the power negative 3. I suppose you could do this without a calculator. That's going to be y equals 2 to the negative 1 to the power negative 3 which is the same as 2 cubed, which is 8. So that point where it crosses the axis, we'll put as 8. So that's the point um, where it's going to cross the axis. Right, so now we have to do exercise 14a on pages 313 to 314 of the textbook.